Welcome back everybody. A question I get a lot is, I've got a wood fence and it's not ready to be replaced yet. How do I take care of it? What can I use to keep this thing looking great for a few years longer? Or a second question might be, how to clean this fence before staining and sealing it? So today, I'm gonna show you. This is Joe Everest, the fence expert. My family's been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. Before we get going, as always, if you find this content helpful or educational, it'd mean the world to me if you gave it a like. Also, currently, nine out of 10 people watching this video right now haven't even subscribed to the channel. It's a free and easy way to support the channel. And again, it would mean a lot to me if you hit subscribe, when you do hit subscribe, ring that notification bell so that YouTube lets you know each and every week when we've got new content available. With that being said, let's clean this fence. Now, typically when we're coming out to clean a fence, we bring an entire cleaning trailer. It's chock full of all sorts of professional equipment to quickly and easily clean and restore the fence. But that doesn't help you guys at home. So to make this video a little bit more realistic, I went to a local home improvement store and I picked up everything that you're gonna need. Now, before we get started, this isn't a sponsored video. We're not getting paid money to shoot this. However, I reached out to Stain and Seal Experts after watching one of their videos on cleaning chemicals, told them that we've got a video I'm wanting to shoot about cleaning a fence, and they sent some free material. So, while it's not a paid promotion, it is kind of a product placement. I wanna be transparent with you guys because I think that's important. The first cleaner that Stainless Steel Experts sent over is their Eco Cleaner. It's 100% sodium percarbonate. It's a lot gentler on a fence, but it doesn't do great at cleaning algae, lichen, that sort of thing. But it's a great cleaner if the fence doesn't have a lot of algae or lichen growing on it, or if you're around a water source, a pond or a lake, and you're really worried about what's gonna run off of this fence directly into the water source. The wood cleaner they sent over, 100% sodium metasilicate. A little bit different chemical compound, a little bit stronger. More effective at removing organic growth. Again, algae and lichen. It's also a little bit stronger of a cleaner too. It's gonna to be a little bit more effective and work a little bit faster. The wood stripper is the strongest cleaner that Sandy Cell Experts shows on their website. It's a potassium hydroxide and sodium metasilicate based cleaner. It's incredibly strong. Now it's a little bit stronger than what we need on this fence, but if this fence was say stain several years ago when we're wanting to take that stain off, or if it had really heavy organic growth, I'm talking lichen growing directly on this fence or deeply embedded organic growth, the wood stripper would likely be a great option for that type of project. Now an added benefit of these cleaners is they seem to be color coded. The eco cleaner is maybe a baby blue. The wood cleaner is a pretty bright yellow. And the wood stripper is a purple. You always know which chemical you're dealing with, even if the label gets defaced or the extra chemicals get added to a Ziploc baggie, you always know what you have based on the colors. Now, I would love this product more if one of these colors are orange. Now, in addition to the wood cleaners they sent over, they also sent us a wood brightener, which is 100% oxalic acid. The way ex they explain the wood brightener is it does a couple things. After the rinse, after the cleaner has been rinsed off, it will neutralize whatever cleaner is left on the board, but it'll also serve to brighten up the board and bring more of the colors out while removing the tannin stains on the board. Not something we asked for, but I'm glad they sent it. So to illustrate the cleaning chemical and the difference that the wood brightener does or does not make, we're actually gonna cut this fence into half. The top half of this fence is gonna stay normal. We're not gonna clean it, we're not gonna brighten it. Nothing's happening to the top half of this fence. The bottom half will get cleaner applied, the wood cleaner applied to the entire line of the fence. Now, this half of a fence, we're gonna cut in half again. This quarter of the fence, we're gonna use the wood brightener on. This quarter of the fence, we're not gonna use any brightener on. We're simply gonna rinse it and let it sit to try to illustrate the difference that this wood brightener does or doesn't make. We're gonna find out together. The first step is to wet down the fence and any grass or landscaping that might be around the fence. The idea is we don't want the cleaner trapped inside the board, so the water should keep the cleaner where we really want it, which is on the exterior of the board. 
It also dilutes any of the landscape, any of the grass that's at the bottom. It dilutes the cleaning chemical down to where it doesn't burn or maybe damage any sort of grass, bushes, or ornamental landscaping. Now I'm just using the shower function on the head. It puts a lot of water on the board, but I'm not using pressure. On an older board like this, and especially one that has this much organic growth, I'd be worried about etching into that board by using you know, the full spray or the jet spray. The shower is just about right for wetting this fence down. All right, so we'll mix in our wood cleaner first. Uh, it should go without saying, you do not mix a wood cleaner with the wood brightener. The brightener is gonna neutralize any of the cleaning power that this has. Also, if your uh, sprayer doesn't have a funnel built in, use a funnel. That way you're sure to get all the chemical in to the sprayer. Now, if you're not comfortable working around chemicals, you know, these chemicals aren't super caustic, but they are chemicals. So if you're not comfortable working with them, if you haven't worked with chemicals before, safety gear is always a good idea. Now, we left a little bit of room left in the uh, sprayer. We're a little bit below the two gallon mark because I figured that we're gonna wanna rinse off this mouth. Also, just know you're gonna get wet throughout this process. As you can see, I've already begun the getting myself wet process. Now we'll give it a quick mix. I've got the drill on just the lowest power setting so that we're not gonna make a mess with the chemical. Also, I should mention that I did the cleaner first, knowing that the mixer is gonna have some of the residual chemical on it when we pull it out. So mixing up the brightener and the neutralizer second means that it's gonna clean off the mixer, but also we're not contaminating our cleaner. One thing I'll note is it's also turned the water the color of the chemical. So this is uh, it obviously is yellow. One of, the, one of the confusing parts is usually we need to label these cleaner and brightener so that we don't get the two mixed up. But if you've got a transparent or some sort of opaque sprayer, uh, it looks like you're going to be able to see the color right through it. All right. So again, we're a little bit below the two gallon mark so that we have a little bit extra room for when we uh, clean off whatever chemicals don't make their way into the sprayer. Now this sprayer came with several nozzles. I've got the adjustable nozzle. You don't want to use too much pressure. You want a nice fan. You want to try to equally apply the chemical without getting a lot of overspray or splashback. Now, as I said, we're going to go from the midpoint of the fence down. So basically what I'm looking at is this nail line of nails. We're going to go from there down. We're going to clean the entire fence. Now, since there's so much growth on this fence, it's been here forever. We're gonna go ahead and rinse and repeat. So we'll rinse off the first layer of what's gotten off of here, and then we'll go ahead and repeat the process again. You know, Jeremy brought up a, a good point just a minute ago uh, that I hadn't really even thought about was that there's no real overwhelming chemical spray. Uh, sometimes when you're around fences that are getting cleaned, it has a very strong, you know, whether, depending on the chemicals you're using, it'll either smell like a pool or just very chemically. Um, this product doesn't have that smell. So one thing I did too is I changed the setting to flat. A little bit more pressure just to try to get some of this organic growth off, but we're not using the jet or the full. We don't want to use too much pressure. Now, this will be the point in the process where some of you guys are going to be itching to get out your power washers that you've been waiting to use. You can do that, but use the widest most open nozzle available. Typically, you know, it's a soap nozzle. Soap nozzle is gonna get a ton of water on the fence, but it's not gonna use a lot of pressure. I don't wanna see you guys etch these boards or just damage them in any way. The more gentle the uh, tip you use, the better your process will be. All right, so as you can see, the cleaner's already done a pretty good job. Now we're gonna go through and reapply the chemical. Now, a good point here is for the first cleaning, we didn't allow much time between the cleaning and the rinse. We knew we we're gonna have to come back again and clean this again just for the amount of growth and algae staining that's here. This time around, we're gonna spray it all down again with the cleaner pretty liberally. We'll probably use what's left in here because this will be the last cleaning pass. Then we're gonna let it sit 10 to 15 minutes depending on how well it's working. If we do see the board start to dry out, I'm gonna hit it with the misting spray. Not enough to rinse it off, but enough to keep that cleaning agent active. Now for the second pass, I'm also starting from the bottom and working my way up. 
so that each part of the board gets full strength cleaner. If I had started at the top and worked my way down, there'd be some runoff that's running down the board. It might get itself diluted. So we're gonna start at the bottom of the board and work our way up. All right, so we've got our cleaning steps down. Couldn't plan that any better after we got done spot treating it. It's just about out. Now we're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes, 15 maybe, wetting it occasionally with a light mist so that it doesn't actually rinse any of it off, but it does keep it wet so that it'll keep that cleaning agent active. Let's see what happens. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. Unfortunately, I did not check this uh, handle here, see if it had a mist function, it does not. So we're gonna use the, the shower function very lightly. Not enough to rinse off any, any of the cleaning agents, but enough to keep them wet and keep them active. All right, so it's been another five minutes of dwell time. I think we've got just about the usefulness out of this that we're gonna get out of it. Again, if we, had, if we were using a power washer, if we had the cleaning trailer here, uh, we would probably use that to make this process a little bit more time efficient, make it a little bit faster, but we're trying to keep this as DIY as possible. So we've changed our setting to flat so that we get a little bit more pressure than shower, but not as much as jet. We really don't want to damage these boards. They're pretty old, they're pretty soft. We want to make this fence look as good as possible. All right, so, so far we've had two cleaning passes and two rinse passes on the fence. Now we're gonna apply the oxalic acid, the wood brightener, see what it does. All right, so there's typically not a dwell time with the wood brightener, the oxalic acid. So we're gonna go ahead and rinse it down. Now we don't need a high pressure rinse this time around. It's more about volume than it is about pressure. So we're gonna make a switch to a shower setting. And rinse this dude off. All right, guys, so we've got the cleaning out of the way. We've already used the wood brightener. Now it's kind of a sit and wait for these boards to dry out. First impressions is this might have been, this fence might have been too far gone to really properly clean. Uh, there's a ton of algae growth. I really didn't think it was as thick as, uh, as what it was, but I think we're seeing good results. To truly give this a fair shot at a, at a review, we really need to wait till these boards dry out. We're gonna give it a day or two and come right back here. All right guys, through the magic of editing, we are back a couple days later. Now, it's important to note that last night it did rain. Well, we wanna get this video out to you guys so the show must go on. It's worth mentioning that it rained last night because these boards are still wet. So the greens are a little bit darker. Also, the clean portion of the fence is a little bit darker. If this fence was dry, both would be a good deal lighter. Now, if you'll remember on my right, your left, we used the wood cleaner followed by the wood brightener. And on my left, your right, we used the wood cleaner but no wood brightener to kind of test out and see what the difference was. I think we can all agree that the bottom half of this fence on both sides is a good deal cleaner than the top half. But there is a little bit of algae staining remaining. There's also dark portions of wood, which could just be the board being wet, but I think it also relates to not using as much pressure as we could have. We wanted to use a hose because it's what's available to most DIY homeowners out there watching this video. If we used a power washer, this could have come cleaner, but a DIY homeowner with a power washer and an incredibly old fence is a dangerous combination and it could lead to damage. Now, when we look to the side with the wood brightener, one thing I noticed is you can see the character of the boards a lot clearer. The grains of the board are more apparent. They just look nicer. The boards without the wood brightener, while they do look cleaner, look bland. If you're cleaning a fence, I would certainly recommend using the wood brightener. I think it's a better end result. Now, as I said in the beginning, Stainless Steel Experts also sent us some wood stripper. It's a bit more aggressive. And to be honest, I use the wood cleaner because I severely underestimated the amount of organic growth and the amount of algae staining in these boards. So in an upcoming video, one that we literally record after we're done recording this video, uh, the side without the wood brightener, we're gonna take the wood stripper to it, followed by the wood brightener. So then we can compare a wood cleaner with brightener to a wood stripper with brightener and see which one of those performs the best. Overall guys, I think you would agree with me that this fence became a lot cleaner using the wood cleaner. Let me know in the comments below what you think or what you might have done differently. 
Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.